If you notice a little lag throughout this video, that's probably my fault. I accidentally left on my capture card after playing Splatoon for a few hours, which seems to have caused some issues in the recording. I didn't really notice it until it had been going on for 20 minutes or so. I also never noticed the audio issues, though that's not really a problem for this episode. I've been encountering a pretty noteworthy bug that makes it difficult to run trains, which is basically the only time audio actually matters. Just keep in mind that, for this next little clip, that's not recording lag that you see. Yep, that's what the game looks like. And until a patch comes out for this bug, there's not a ton I can reasonably do. Fortunately, though, it sounds as if the developers are aware of this issue and its cause. In a Steam thread, I read it was a problem having to do with how the game handles bridge splines. While I do prefer to build my routes as close to the ground as I can manage, I'm more than willing to throw out bridges wherever necessary. After all, the elevation difference can look pretty nice. However, my definition of quote-unquote necessary is a little bit loose, and there are a few bridges in the valley that are a bit... ridiculous, to say the least. And, unfortunately, the patch has yet to be publicly released in any form, so I kinda just have to wait until it gets resolved before I can record trains running again. You know what I can record, though? Track work. I never planned to, but I might as well. After all, I don't like the initial loop I built at the smelter. There's three reasons I dislike the loop I initially built here. All of them are minor, and I would be willing to look past each flaw on its own, but together I had enough of a sour taste in my mouth that I decided it was worth rebuilding. First, it's a loop. For the Skyline Valley, I've been challenging myself to avoid using them, instead favoring Ys or turntables to reverse trains or locomotives. It's just a personal preference for this playthrough. Second, jeez man, why is that curve gotta be so tight? While I'm fine with occasionally having curves sharper than 70 meters, I'd prefer to avoid them wherever possible, especially on the main line. It admittedly does feel a little hypocritical to know that I've added at least three curves that meet that criteria on the way down to the smelter, yet I still want this one gone, but again, it's a minor nitpick that I would otherwise look past if not for the other two issues here. Lastly, the loop makes the distances between the loading and unloading zones closer than I'd like. While this isn't an issue now, as I'm not really running two trains, if I ever do get a second operator on this save, which I do hope to eventually do, I don't want to deal with the headaches these tight clearances would cause. With that all in mind, I made a mock-up layout rather quickly that I enjoyed. The design is much simpler, with less room for conflict, more gradual curves, and a method of reversing more in line with my style for this save. And so that's what we're building today. Or, well, more realistically, what I built four days ago, as I'm recording this audio on December 8th, while the video was recorded on the 4th. I was just holding out and hoping that the patch would be out by Thursday, as I'm going to be binging Splatoon's big run event over the weekend. Alas, I guess I'll need to wait a little longer. But that's not the end of the world. Nor is the fact that I had no caboose on my train earlier. I thought I'd bring it up and explain why that was the case. The answer is simple, it was a test train that I expected no one else would ever see. You see, the Mosca's brakes aren't the best, and the route down to the smelter from the iron mine has a grade that reaches a whopping 11.5% downhill with a substandard curve with a 60 meter radius. In order to prove the Mosca was up to the task, I decided to just run 8 fully loaded hoppers, as that's heavier than the typical train I expect to run on the iron mine branch. I didn't throw on a caboose, because it was just a test, after all. Clearly, though, my assumption that no one would ever see it was wrong, though I didn't expect to be recording track laying to avoid a bug of this magnitude, especially since it only started getting laggy when I had finished the smelter's connection to the sawmill. So if you noticed that, and were worried, don't be. This is just a special exception. I still aim to include cabooses on every train. Good news, it did make it down the hill. Yes, 
even with that horrid lag. I probably derailed five to seven times, but I got it eventually. Now, I would talk about the track laying process here, but I'm not really sure what to say. The new spline system has made it so easy to do that I don't know what I would need to explain. One thing I can mention, though, is that I've downgraded several parts of the line to better fit this simple style. The smelter is just the latest example. There used to be a fully double-tracked route from the freight depot to the sawmill, which I just found excessive and tiring to use. There was a seven-track yard at the sawmill that I removed for the same reason. The spawn area used to have a longer, weirder track for both the outside lane of the freight depot and the spur for the firewood depot. So, I guess, part of the process is evolution. Track layouts aren't always static, you know? While it's good to build for the best at first, don't be afraid to make changes as you go. That's honestly just a good life tip. Now that I think about it a little more, that tip is something I did need to consider here, actually. As I finished up the end of the line, I was hoping the maximum grade I would need was merely half a percent to keep everything above ground level. This unfortunately didn't work out, but instead of tearing up everything to try and make it so it would, I just decided to tear up a bit and make a small portion have a 1% grade instead. Outside of this recording, I've also updated the legs of the Y to better fit an entire train in one section, just to make using the Y a little bit faster. With nothing better to do but wait for this patch, maybe now is a good time for me to reconsider and or rebuild some parts of the line outside of this melter. Who knows how things will look once I'm done. Not that it'll matter much though, as this is only episode 2, it's not like any of you have had any time to get attached to what I've built already. Speaking of the series, the first video did really well for this channel. As of the 9th, yes, it's now a day later, I had some writer's block with this script, it has 18 likes and 110 views. Most videos get, like, 5 likes and 30 views at best on this channel. Guess I've got more of an audience this time, hmm? Again, I don't really know how this all affects the algorithm, but I can tell you it boosts my interest in continuing the series. It's definitely done the case here. As I said before, I wasn't originally planning to show any track laying. I figured I should still get a video out this week, so I pushed myself to work on this. Hopefully, next episode things will be back on track. Even if the patch doesn't come out in a reasonable time frame, it might be fine. I've heard the bug has to do with specifically the latest type of bridge they added, not the old steel and wooden ones, so I might go around replacing some bridges and seeing how my frame rate does then. I guess only time will tell. Hopefully it works. For now, though, I hope this was entertaining to watch, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, folks.